Even though KVM supports both Windows and Linux virtual guests, the RHCSA exam only tests your ability on installing Red Hat Linux systems as a virtual guest. Now let's walk through the steps to set up a brand new guest. To create a new guest, click on the Create New Virtual Machine button on the toolbar. First, we will give our guest a name. Then we can choose how we are going to install the guest. We can choose between an ISO image or a disk in our CD-ROM drive. We can also choose from a few network installation methods or import an existing disk image. We will use an ISO image. We will browse for our local ISO image, which we placed in a directory we created called var ISOs. Click on the ISO that you wish to use, then click the Open button. Now we will click on the drop-down menus to choose our operating system type and version. Click the Forward button. Now we can configure how much RAM the guest will have and how many CPUs we will assign it. We will configure our guest with 2 GB of RAM and 2 CPUs. Click the Forward button. On this page, we can configure our virtual disk file. By default, our disk size would be 8 GB. We will increase this size to 10 GB. Below that, we see an option to allocate the entire disk now. When this is checked, the disk creation will build a disk file the exact size that we specified. For instance, we chose 10 GB for our virtual disk storage. So by allocating the entire disk now, we will create a disk file that is 10 GB in size. This file is created in the raw file format, meaning that all of the disk space is there. This file format is better for performance, as we will explain in a moment. If we uncheck this box, the other option would mean that we will create a much smaller file that will grow to the size we specified. As we install the operating system and software, the disk image file will increase up to the maximum disk size we set. So if you create a 10 GB disk size and your operating system install is only 3 GB, then your disk file size will be 3 GB. It will only increase when you add more data to the disk file. This file format is the QCAL format. This will save you disk space, but you will lose out in performance as your disk file grows. In a raw format of file, the data goes straight to the image disk, but in the QCAL format of file, the data is copied in, and then the disk size expands, and then more data is copied in, and the disk size expands again. The performance hit comes from the hypervisor having to keep a check on the disk file size and increasing it when needed. Now we are presented with a summary screen showing our installation information. Let's click on the Customize Configuration Before Install checkbox. Then click the Finish button. Here we are presented with a view of the virtual machine's details. Click on the Disk category. Then click on the Advanced Options. We can see that the cache mode is default and our storage format is using a raw format of file, but let's take a look at our disk bus. As you can see, we have a few options as to what type of disk bus to use. We stated before that a fully virtualized guest is not aware that it is a virtual machine because it is not using any modified drivers. If we click on vert.io, then we are telling vert manager to create our guest using drivers specifically designed to provide better performance for KVM based hypervisors. Once you install virtualization based drivers, you go from running a fully virtualized guest to a para virtualized guest. So the trade off is that you could get slightly less performance on a guest that doesn't know that it is a virtual machine or a guest with slightly better performance that is aware that it is a virtual machine. Some vendors may not support virtual machines, so this can be important depending on your environment. For our example, we will use the better performance of the Vert.io disk bus. Then click the Apply button. 
Now we will continue on with our installation as normal. Just click the Begin Installation button once you have completed your changes. Again, I encourage you to explore the Vert Manager utility further. There are a lot of advanced features there that you will not be responsible for on the exam, but it really is a neat tool.